Welcome back. In the last video, we looked at a database called WordNet. In WordNet, what you have is words, and each word is composed of different sin sets. Each of these is a different meaning for the word. And within each sin set, you have relationships to other words. So for example, if you have the word happy, you know that it is a synonym of joyful, for example. If you have the word hot, you know that it's an antonym, something that is opposite in meaning to cold. So hot is an antonym of cold. Word that contains many other relationships, and we'll take a look at a few examples here. By the way, there's a PDF uh, on your Canvas website which has the list of all the names because I know there's, there's quite a bit of names in this presentation. For example, WordNet can tell you about the hypernyms of a word. A hypernym is a kind of something. So for example, a dog is a kind of canine. So if you know that you have some properties that are applying to a canine, they are also going to be true for a kind of canine, a dog. The opposite of this relationship is a hyponym, which is a category that contains something else. For example, a canine has within it dog. So a canine is a category and within it, it contains dog. And then the hypernym is dog is a kind of canine. So we have hypernyms and hyponyms. Dog, um, a hypernym for dog is a canine because a dog is a kind of canine. This is also true of wolf. A wolf is a kind of canine. So both dog and wolf share a hypernym. They are a kind of something canine. Because of this, they both share a kind of something, a hypernym. These are called coordinate terms. So wolf is the coordinate of dog. Dog is the coordinate of wolf. Very briefly, by the way, I'm going to show you in our example code. We had here the sin, uh, the sin sets for dog, which we looked at in the last video. So, and we had examples for these concepts. So for example, a dog is a kind of canine and it's a kind of domestic animal. A corgi is a kind of dog. And as you can see, it has many other relationships, like many finer gradations of the relationships. It has something called root hypernyms, which is like the highest possible category that uh, something can belong to. So dogs are canines for sure, but the ultimate thing that they are in the system is entities. This is the root hypernym for dog, a kind of entity. The hyponyms tell us the type, uh, the subtypes for the word. So dog has uh, a hyponym for dog has as examples, corgi, uh, Dalmatian, Great Pyrenees, pug, and so forth. So these are all kinds of dog. We have something called holonyms, which uh, ooh, we'll discuss them in a moment. Here we go. So um, meronym and a holonym are two related words. A meronym a holonym is a part of something. So a window is a part of a building. As you can see in the example here, a dog is a part of a pack. It is a member of a pack. Uh, the contrary for this relationship is a meronym, which is something that has a word as a part. So a part of a building is a window. A part of a building could be a door, for example. These are meronyms of building. Let's take a look at them very quickly. Mm -hmm. Let's comment out the dog part and bring this example for meronyms and holonyms. So as you can see, we are, are asking the computer for the holonyms of tree and the meronyms of tree to see what are the parts of a tree. Mm -hmm. So a tree is a part of a forest and the tree has as its parts a crown, a limb, a stem, a trunk, but not a leaf. <laughs> um, as you can see, 
these are some meronyms or like sub parts, sub components of tree. Hmm. Right. Let's look at a longer example. For example, a word like house. There's something in semantics called prototype theory, which tells you that you're probably describing something as like some prototype in your mind. So when I say the word house, you're probably imagining some platonic or, you know, archetypal house uh, with, you know, a little roof and walls. But there's many other meanings for the word. A house can be a group of individuals according to a certain um, goal, for example. It can be a group of individuals in a legislature. It can be a type of music that is performed in a kind of environment. It can be the name of a person. For example, this is what happened when I typed, uh, I typed house on Google. Let's look at what WordNet tells us for house. And as you can see here in this example code, I have the hyper, I have for every synth set, hypernyms, hyponyms, two types of meronyms, member and part, two types of holonyms, member and part. Oh, and a third one, substance and uh, two subtypes of hypernyms, instance hypernym. Oh, and I have this one repeated. I apologize. I'm going to get rid of that. So this is going to take all of the synthets for house and it's going to show us all of its components. So for it has 14 components. There's a verb, which is to house something, to contain it or to cover it. And it has a hypernym, so a uh, to house someone is a kind of accommodation. Let's go up the list. The primary word for house is house noun, dwelling that serves as living quarters. So a house is a type of building. A house is a type of dwelling. And there are different subtypes of houses, such as a beach house, a cabin, a dollhouse, a farmhouse and a villa and so forth. Here we have some meronyms, for example. So a house has libraries, porch, a study. This is one meaning, but there's, a, there's other ones too. There's other synsets. For example, a house can be a firm, members of a business organization, and a firm is a kind of business, and different kinds of firms include accounting firms, corporations, publishers, and so forth. And you can look at the example yourself. Uh, audiences gathered in a cinema, an assembly with legislative powers, uh, an aristocratic line. So every, arist every aristocratic house is a family, and some types of aristocratic houses include the Medicis and royalty. All right, so this is what we have for the nouns. Let's look at some relationships for verbs. Verbs also have hypernyms, so listening is a kind of perceiving. They have a few relationships that are unique to verbs. For example, a troponym, which is, some, which is a manner of doing something else. So uh, whispering is a manner of talking. Entailment means that if you're doing something, you're also doing something else. If you're snoring, you're also sleeping, for example. Uh, coordinate terms mean the same, that they share some sort of hypernym. So talking and yelling must have in common, like, you know, communicating. So that's why they appear as coordinates. Mm -hmm. Here we have an example from the word eat. The, uh, and we are looking at the verb to eat, which has as, an entail as entailments, chew, masticate, and swallow. So if you're eating, it means that you're also swallowing. If you're eating, it means that you're also masticating and so forth. Let's look at the example. Here I have the example for just that code to eat. And we're going to look at the very first sin set. Mm -hmm. If you're eating, you are also, you're also chewing. If you're eating, you're also swallowing and so forth. All right, and I'm coming to this one in a moment. 
One cool thing is that we can measure similarity between words. And there's many algorithms depending on the way you traverse the different connections between the words. But as you can see, it, it works well. The ships and boats are very similar. Ships and cars is somewhat similar because they are means of transportation. And ships and cats are less similar, but they still share some things. They're both entities in the world, for example. I have here the code for a kind of distance called WUP distance, and you can see how it works for yourself. Finally, I want to show you something that you can do with a word to net. Why are we doing this? Word to net helps us resolve lexical ambiguity. So we've looked at syntactic ambiguity before, where uh, the chicken is ready to eat, for example. We don't know if the chicken is doing the action or the chicken is suffering the action. And these would be different parsing trees. There's another type of ambiguity called lexical ambiguity, where a word could have two different meanings, such as the animal, duck, or the action to duck. WordNet can help us solve this. For example, if we have the sentence, she chairs the department, chairs can have many different meanings. As you can see, it's the object that you sit on that has uh, something to hold you back. It can mean a professorship. It can mean to moderate something, like to preside it. Mm, and, uh, and department can also have different meanings, probably department store, but also uh, somewhere that produces knowledge and so forth. What this code does is that it calculates the distance between every sinset of chair and every sinset of department. And by the way, this performs uh, a type of stemming uh, uh, in the system, so that it knows that chairs is related to chair. It measures the similarity between every sinset for chairs and every sinset for department, and then reports what are the two sinsets that are closest together because we have the sentence she chairs the department I'm going to run it really quick as you can see it reports that the best sin set the two sin sets that were closest was the verb to moderate and the noun a specialized sphere of knowledge so she presides over a specialized sphere of knowledge sphere of knowledge is what this sentence actually means. It does not mean she uh, seats with uh, uh, holding for your back in a place that sells things. So WordNet can help us figure out what are the actual meanings of the word that we need to understand the sentence. WordNets exist for other languages, uh, but it's very difficult and expensive to make them. So they don't exist for a lot of languages. This one in Portuguese, for example, has dinheiro, money, as both um, resources and as the actual physical money. In summary, databases like WordNet can help us understand the relationships between words. So, for example, dogs are a part of a pack and corgis are a kind of dog. And this can help us extend the knowledge that we have from a knowledge base. So we know that if something applies to a dog, it'll also apply to a corgi. WordNet also helps us resolve lexical ambiguity. So we can know that if, you get, if we get the sentence, she chairs the department, this word means moderate and not a seat that supports your back.